out oh, to the press. Oh my gosh! When's the last time you had a gaggle? I heard it was three of them last week, but three I of them last week. Uh, oh, well, that seems often, isn't it? Well, reasonable? he it's oh. it's feast or famine. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's been there were times he oh. went like a few months without. Well, having. he was out of town for a couple of years. Oh, I'm talking. I'm not talking about when he was uh, oh. running for president. Yep. Only the president was extra bad because he wasn't even in the state. Yeah, yeah. There were months when he wasn't even here. Right. Yeah. Which is his own issue. Okay, yes. we ready? Yes. Yes. Hi, thank you. Yeah. So, what prompts you to run for governor? Yeah, why do you want the job? I'm so surprised you asked that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Very look, I, having grown up in the shadow of a steel mill and watching it close as a as a kid and seeing all the jobs disappear. I know firsthand what happens when an industry moves overseas. I know what it did to my community. I know uh, how it devastated the opportunities that were available to my sisters and I. Uh, so that's, of course, why I turned to the military. In Ohio, we need new leadership, someone who's uh, got the backbone and the wherewithal to grow new jobs, bring in the new industries of the 21st century, and someone who's going to do everything she can to fight for the people of Ohio. That, that's, I have leadership to offer. I have a vision for Ohio, and that's why I'm running. What differentiates you from the other Democratic candidates declared and potential? Well, first of all, I'm, I can win. I think that's the biggest differentiator. And look, I, sp I have a much different background than everybody else. I, uh, I spent eight years on active duty in the military. I got the best leadership training in the world. I learned in the military to come into every mission ready to succeed, and I am very prepared to win in this race. I, I'm an attorney. I do my homework. I entered this race uh, hitting the ground running. I have a great staff. They're working really well together. You've seen my fundraising. All that's public record. Uh, I've been to 40 counties already. I've got the only uh, statewide labor endorsement uh, given out in this race. And I am the only candidate who has run and won in a Republican district. Three times, no doubt. So I, I, have, uh, I have the right background and the right leadership that, that we need to win the state and to lead the state. Whoever the Democratic nominee is is going to have to raise a boatload of money. Uh, can you talk about your fundraising and how much money you think is going to be needed to one win the nomination and then to the general if you advance? Well, I'll talk in general, general terms about fundraising. Unfortunately, we live in a world where fundraising is important. Uh, you cannot communicate with six million voters if you don't have the money to pay for TV and mail and stamps and things like that. Uh, my fundraising, I, I filed at the end of January with 425000 in the bank. I've got a top-notch uh, fundraising team, and we're working very hard every day. I'm confident that I'll have the resources I need to win this race. Any, uh, any idea how much in general a Democratic nominee would need? Well, if we look at uh, Sherrod Brown's last race, I think he raised $12 million, if I'm correct. I'm certain it'll be more than that. Um, okay. Inflation. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what would you say is the top social issue that concerns you the most? The, the heroin academic, epidemic. Uh, look, this is not a new epidemic, but it is certainly a public health crisis. It is in every neighborhood, in every part of the state. It's, uh, it's destroying families. It's destroying towns. Uh, I do have some plans on how I want to address that. We'll, of course, be releasing specifics uh, along the campaign trail, but let me tell you that, of course, we have to work on, uh, we have to focus on prevention to keep people from trying those types of uh, drugs, but also treatment, enforcement, making sure the drugs stay off the streets, but also family support for the recovering addict when they come home and the family while the re addict is in recovery, and jobs. People need the dignity of work. They need to have hope for the future, and that's a big part of the equation. Do you Con go ahead. Connie, a couple questions. Last year, Donald Trump beat the pants off of Hillary Clinton in Ohio. 446,000 votes, almost 9%. Ohio's jury mattered so that the Ohio Senate and the Ohio House have more Republicans in them in decades. What's the most important thing you learned from Mrs. Clinton's defeat that you're going to use to make you win? I actually learned a lot of things. I'm not sure I could 
pinned the most important on anything. But of course, the number one thing, let me just say this. The number one thing is to know who you're trying to talk to. To know the challenges and concerns of the voters you wish to earn, whose support you wish to earn. And I'm not sure that the Clinton campaign did that. When I was traveling around the state running for treasurer, um, it was very moving to me because, as I said earlier, I grew up in the shadow of a steel plant, watched it close, watched what it did to my town. But when I traveled around the state as treasurer, I got to see firsthand how that same scene played out in every different corner of Ohio. I mean, just everywhere. Just so many jobs lost to trade or automation, um, people in towns being left behind, and people don't feel they have any hope. They want jobs. And I don't think they heard that from Hillary Clinton. I also don't think that, uh, and I think there will be books and stories and articles and pundits will tell you everything she did right and everything she did wrong. But I can tell you the way I have campaigned is by being out in my district constantly. And uh, I've knocked on uh, over 24,000 doors in my district. So I probably knocked on the door at some time or another of every single one of the 32,000 people who voted for me in my 2012 race. That is the only way you can really find out what's going on uh, in your district. Now, I can't possibly knock on three million doors. There's just not enough hours in the day. So I do ha I have to approach it a little bit differently. But as I've traveled to the 40 counties I've traveled to already, I have already been doing that. I, have al I always meet with business leaders bus or business owners. I meet with labor. I meet with um, uh, workers. I meet with families. Because I want to find out what their challenges are. I, uh, <laughs> All right. How's about that? We'll stop right there. Um, so there's been a lot of soul searching, a lot of analysis among Democrats about why uh, Hillary Clinton lost so bad. A lot of folks say, and you sort of said it, she didn't have an economic message, uh, especially to rural counties. Um, what's your economic message to all the left behind folks that mm -hmm. switched from uh, voting for uh, President Obama twice to voting for Donald Trump? Yeah. What's the new economic message? The economic message is the message of my campaign. The number one issue is jobs. Number two issue is jobs. Number three is jobs. Four and five are jobs. Now I understand you've asked questions about other issues. We have a host of issues to, to tackle in Ohio. But the dignity of work, the ability to be able to support your family has got to be number one. And there are a number of things we have to do. I think there are five things we have to focus on. Education, you can't have a job if you don't have the skills. And no one's going to, no one's going to, um, build a business here if they can't get the skilled workers to work there. Number two is the infrastructure, uh, including access to high-speed internet all across the state. There are places in Ohio where they don't have high-speed internet. Number three is we have to support our startups. Programs like the Third Frontier are a great example of how successful that can be. These are the creative and visionary things that are going to create jobs uh, over in the future and could have the potential to create a lot of jobs. But they're created by people who are invested in Ohio, people who live here. Uh, the next one is those middle stage businesses. Uh, they already have a good solid business plan. It works, but they have to grow. And these, again, are operated and owned by people who live in Ohio. So they're, they're invested in the community. They're going to stay here. They're not going to get pawned off to Kentucky or Georgia or someplace else. And then the other one we have to do is bring in those new industries of the 21st century, industries that maybe haven't really come to uh, fruition uh, completely in the mind of their inventors, but we know they're coming. I need them to know that Ohio is open for business, that Ohio has great schools, great infrastructure, and the best work ethic, and frankly, the nicest people in the country. You sound like John Kasich. You know, Is that John, right? I'm glad he likes my ideas. Right, 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 right. And as we learned last Friday, the new BLS Bureau of Labor Statistics came out. Mm -hmm. Governor Kasich entered his 52nd month, four years yeah. of underperforming the national job creation average. How are you going to do better? Well, first of all, I'm not going to run for president. I'm not going to waste time attacking labor unions. I'm not going to waste time trying to suppress wages. I'm going to be a relentless advocate for our state. Look, I, I think I have a pretty good reputation for my work ethic, and I'm going to continue to do that. That's the only way I'm going to win this race is by being the, the strongest and hardest worker out there. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing for the people of Ohio. I take it very seriously when someone invests in me with their vote or their campaign donation or a letter they write to me. And there's nothing more rewarding on this earth than, try, than 
succeeding and helping someone else succeed. And that's why that's why I'm running. That's why I'm here. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, you were in the legislature yeah, when I, let someone else. Couple other people. I got one more follow up, okay. Jeremy. You were in the legislature when House Bill 1 passed. Jobs Ohio. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There are a lot of folks that say Jobs Ohio is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Ohio Supreme Court has kept the only challenge to it from going to the Ohio Supreme yeah. Court. So we have a group that's private, it's got a billion dollars behind it, mm -hmm. and yet it very well might be unconstitutional. Will Jobs Ohio be an issue for you? Well, look, I'm going to pay attention to that, of course. It's our, uh, supposed to be our main economic development tool in Ohio. It's a little bit difficult to analyze its success when it's not a public entity, when uh, when they amended the bill virtually, and I don't think it was even virtually, I think it was literally in the middle of the night to prevent people from following the money that goes into it, to suddenly create this as private dollars instead of public, the public dollars they had been for decades. So it's a little bit tough. I've been doing my research as best I can on that, and the, there are a variety of opinions of, as to the successfulness of Jobs Ohio. On one hand, people say they've got some great expertise in there, but on the other hand, they say there's not enough expertise so I've got to figure that out this is the tool that the legislature's given us and I'm going to do everything I can to make it work the best for Ohio in an open and transparent way yeah. well, thank you, you gentlemen well, I get one more in um, yeah. Tony what yeah. uh, why should Democrats vote for you over uh, Senator Schiavone and uh, ex-representative Sutton and what policy what separates you guys on policy uh, I don't know what their policies are. I do suspect that we're all pretty good Democrats. Uh, but what this campaign is going to be about is leadership. The state, as, as Mr. Spinelli said, the state's lagging in job growth, unemployment's ticking up, wages continue to be too low. What we need is someone who's got leadership. That's what people need. We need leadership and vision and bold creativity to lead us into the, the next decade. As an officer in the Air Force, I've got the best leadership training in the world. I have 15 years of executive uh, experience, both as an officer and running my own business. And I have, uh, I have the, uh, I am the only candidate who has run and won in a Republican district. Now, while I believe our Democratic base is going to be highly motivated to turn out next year, we are a purple state. You got to get crossovers. You got to get crossover votes. And the crossover voters are looking for someone with the strength of character, someone who's got uh, uh, got background in the military, someone who's someone who knows what it's like to see the town disappear because the job because the jobs are lost because an industry left town, someone who's fought the battle trying to raise good kids in a world that that does everything it can to prevent you from doing that. They're looking for someone with that leadership, someone with that experience. I'm the only candidate that brings that to the table. Okay, great. Thanks.